I'm Lillian and welcome to my bookshop tour. bookshelves they're the classic uh, billy bookshelves from ikea except for this top piece which was built for me by my dad a few years ago when i started running out of space on the normal shelves because i live on the top floor in our house i have this sloping attic ceiling so i can't fit any of the taller billy bookshelves um, but this is working perfectly for me at the moment i organize my books firstly by genre so i have my little non-fiction bookcase here and then all of this behind me is fiction with a few exceptions, but we're going to start the tour on this one first. So the main parts of these bookcases are my Harry Potter section at the top, then my TBR books there, then we have the main rainbow, plus then the like general series at the bottom which haven't been split up and integrated into the rainbow. So we're going to start at the top with my Harry Potter shelf. This is the only series that gets its own pride of place display on my shelves because it's my absolute favourite series ever. First we have all the German editions of the Harry Potter books, of which I've only read the first one and the first half of the second one. My biggest critique of these editions is the colour scheme, I think that could do with some improvement. The second and fourth ones are exactly the same colour, the first and fifths are basically exactly the same colour, and I really don't like the colour scheme of yellow, orange, indigo, orange, yellow, black, light orange. I don't think that looks very nice. I also have the first book in French, bought this at a French supermarket about five years ago and have yet to read a single page. And then we have all my lovely English editions. I have multiple copies of most of the books because some of them are the original copy me and my family read 20 years ago and some are ones that I've picked up in charity shops since. So for instance, this is the original edition of Philosopher's Stone, which me and my family read. It's so battered and bruised because it's so well loved. Whereas these two next to it are ones I've got since in a charity shop. The clock is resting on this poor creature in the middle, which is actually a copy of The Order of the Phoenix. Its spine is held together with duct tape now, but if you open it, you can still see where I wrote my name in it when I was in year five. As well as the original books, I also have the three extra ones that are published with the series, plus the uh, script book of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, as well as the programme from when I went to see it with my family, and also the official guide to the Warner Bros Harry Potter studio tour, which I went to with my sister for my 21st birthday. And then we move on to the far right of my top shelf. These are all my unread books. There used to be a lot more of them, I've done a pretty good job in the last year of unhauling them or actually reading them. Having said that, some of these have been sitting here a long time, for instance the three David Mitchell books at the bottom, plus Empire of Storms, The Conjuring of Light, Dark Matter and Arcadia, which is probably the most intimidating book on this TBR, but look how cool the cover is and it has this nice cutout detail. I have this rule for these bookshelves that unread books must remain separate from the rest, with actually only one exception that you'll see later on the bottom shelf. On my non-fiction shelves I mix in the read and unread books together because I see it more as a reference library for me to come back to in the future. A couple of the books here like Sissy and Eats Vet Play are actually non-fiction but I keep memoirs and autobiographical books on these shelves and then Eats Vet Play is just like a random anomaly. So on to the start of my rainbow, this is the brown red orange shelf. Right at the start we have the Sally Lockhart books by Philip Pullman. Because these are a box set I didn't want to divide them up into their individual colours and then integrate them into the rainbow because I really prefer to keep my series together where possible. So I put these ones right at the beginning because they're kind of camouflage <laughs> at the beginning of the rainbow. Some favourite books on this shelf are The Swish of the Curtain by Pamela Brown. This is another childhood favourite that's really battered. I also love Beauty by Robert McKinley. This had a dust jacket once, it's been lost over the years. And I also love The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller, as well as the first book in the Molly Moon series by Georgia Bing. I also have the sequel to this, as well as the rest of the Millennium series by Steve Larson on my shelves. 
but these are actually two of the very few series where I did decide to split the books up and put them in different parts of the rainbow. So you will see the rest of those books later in the tour. So the next shelf is my yellow through green one. Obviously these first four books, The Mortal Engines, Quartet by Philip Reeve, don't really fit the colour scheme, but because the first book is red, the last one is yellow, I use them to bridge that gap. This series is also one of my favourites of all time. I know they made a film recently, which I did not see because I didn't want to tarnish the series reputation in my head. And some other books I love on this shelf are High Mats by Nora Krug. This was the latest pick for me and my friend's book club. It was my turn to choose and I really liked it, so I think that was a good choice. And this is the second Molly Moon book, Molly Moon Stops the World. Honestly, I'm kind of obsessed with this one. I still think about it all the time. And then we obviously have Uprooted by Naomi Novik. This is the only book displayed face out like this on my shelves at the moment. I used to have a few more dotted around, but as books have come and gone, I switched things up to make more space. And so this is the only one facing out like this currently. But can you blame me? Look how gorgeous it is. So from that shelf we come on to my turquoise and light blue shelf. This change from green to blue was probably the most annoying bit of my shelves to do when I was first organising them into a rainbow. Again this shelf has me trying to sneak in a full series even though the colours don't match. These are the Fever Crumb books by Philip Reeve and they're like the prequel series to the Mortal Engines and I also really loved these. Other favourites on this shelf are The Forgotten Garden by Kate Morton as well as Nimona by Noelle Stevenson. This is maybe my favourite standalone graphic novel ever. I also love The Humans by Matt Haig even though the rest of his books I've read haven't really matched up in comparison to this one. We also have the Rat Queens graphic novel series on this shelf. This is by Curtis J. Weeb. I really liked these, but I only have the first three because at the end of the third one, there was this great cliffhanger. Um, but, but then between the third and the fourth volumes, there was this kind of creative shake up behind the scenes. And then the fourth volume was kind of like a reboot of the series and the characters. And the amazing cliffhanger was never really solved or mentioned. And the series just carried on like it never happened. So I'm choosing to believe that these two volumes are all, that, are all that exist and even though the story then ends for me on a cliffhanger I still prefer it this way. And then finally on the shelf my favourite is Mighty Fizz Chiller by Philip Ridley. This is another childhood favourite so it's very battered. The next shelf is my dark blue shelf. This is definitely the most cohesive shelf colour wise out of all of them. It doesn't have any slightly mismatching series sneaking their way in. And the ones I want to mention quickly are Skybreaker by Kenneth Oppel. This is a childhood favourite and is still one of my absolute favourite books of all time. And right next to it we have The First 15 Lives of Harry August, which is again one of my absolute favourites. And I should also give a shout out to The Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer for being one of the first series I got into and really enjoyed because it was big on booktube at the time. So next we get to the purple, pink and white shelf. We have the Ink Heart series by Cornelia Funke. This was another childhood favourite of mine. And look how gorgeous the cover of Ink Death is. Cloud Atlas is a book I read and loved and got me really obsessed with David Mitchell, which is why I have three of his books on my TBR. This shelf also has The Constant Princess by Philippa Gregory. This is another of my all time favourites. After I read this, I picked up a lot more of her books and I kind of read them at the time, though looking back I was definitely too young to be reading them. And then I realised that I would never love any of them as much as I love this book. So they're all gone and this is the only one of her books still on my shelves. Then we have The Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Mass, another one I read because of booktube. I never actually finished it, I've only got the first four books here and the fifth one is on my TBR shelf. And I gave up on this series because between the fourth and the fifth books she wrote this companion novel called Tower of Dawn and even though she kept saying it wasn't part of the series we all kind of knew it was and I knew I would have to read it before I continued with the fifth book. Anyway I'm pointing these out because I'm actually currently rereading this series. I'm halfway through Crown of Midnight as of filming this and that was to see if I enjoyed it as much the second time round. The answer is definitely no I don't but I'm still having a blast and I think now I am actually going to get Tower of Dawn and the sixth and final book of the series and actually finish the story. 
And finally, at the end here, we have all my Flower Fairy books by Cicely Mary Barker. This one on the end was the first one I got. It's the complete book of the Flower Fairies. And I actually got it from my grandparents for Christmas one year. And I got the rest of these from my grandma's collection when she died a couple of years ago because she also loved the Flower Fairy series. This next shelf is where my white books start giving way to the grey and black ones. Some favourites on this shelf include Enchantment by Kevin Crossley Holland. This is a book full of folk tales from Britain. I also loved Vicious by V.E. Schwab, but I have not read the sequel, Vengeful, yet. And a final favourite on this shelf is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. I actually read this before I found Booktube or Bookstagram. I just picked it up randomly in a bookshop one day. And I remember reading it on the train to Bangor to go to the university open day with my mum in 2012 or 13. Okay, on to the very bottom of my shelves. This is where I have the rest of my black books and then they start fading into my full series bits. But these are all the ones which were bright colours and I didn't want to break them up and put them into the rainbow. So the first favourite on this shelf is The Encyclopedia of Early Earth by Isabel Greenberg. I also have the German edition of this one which I wrote an essay on in my final year. The shelf also has my two favourite graphic novel series on it. We've got Monstrous on this side, this is by Marjorie Liu and Simon Takeda, and over at the end is the Saga series by Brian K. Vaughan and Fiona Staples. This is just the dust jacket of Cersei because I've lent it to a friend at the moment. And then these books here are the only exception to my all unread books must stay separate rule because I've only read the first one, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I have not read the other four, but because they're a box set, I wanted to keep them all together and that was like an override to my previous rule. And then finally here we have the Wolf Brothers series by Michelle Paver. I think the official title for these is The Chronicles of Ancient Darkness, but this is another all-time favourite series of mine. But the most special book on this shelf, without a doubt, is this edition of The Lord of the Rings. That's right, this tiny book is about the same size as Akadar. This contains all three of the volumes, and look at this gorgeous cover. This book is amazing. It has bible paper the font is tiny and it's over a thousand pages it also has these brilliant maps that fold out look at this i'm obsessed this is actually my dad's book but i begged him to let me have it on my shelves because i'm so in awe of it and then in this dark slightly dingy corner we have the final section of my fiction bookshelves these are the Lady Grace mysteries. They were an absolute favourite of mine growing up. I'm not sure who wrote them though because I think it was a team of people working together. And then here we have the Game of Thrones books. So ta-da! That's it of these shelves. Let's move on to my non-fiction ones. This bookcase has gone through many iterations over the years but this is its current state. I have a couple of little things on the top. I'm not a huge fan of trinkets on my bookshelves. I like what they look, but they're just not very practical. So this is what I limit myself to. So this is a photo of me and my friends during a murder mystery evening from last summer. Then we have a couple of Harry Potter things. So we've got two chocolate frog cards. We've got the Hogwarts Express ticket I got when I visited the studio tour a couple years ago plus two little badges from when I went to see Cursed Child. I have very mixed feelings about the play now, but I have to say that seeing it in the theatre was maybe the best experience I've ever had. We saw it about a week before the script was published, so we went in completely blind, we didn't know anything that was going to happen, and just hearing everyone in the audience gasp and shriek and whisper to each other as everything unfolded was just amazing. The magic on stage was fantastic, and it was just maybe the best time I've ever had in a theatre. These little bottles at the end aren't technically Harry Potter related, but I think they kind of match. They were given to me in year three, I think, by a friend. So I've had them for a long time and I'm amazed I haven't broken or lost them yet. I haven't ever used them for anything, I've never put any perfume inside them, yet this pink one on the end still smells vaguely of perfume, so I'm not sure what that's about. And finally, this is my Bertie Bots Every Flavor Beans package my friend made me years and years ago. She filled it with just normal jelly beans. Now inside it I keep sea glass and other pieces of coloured glass I have. 
Most of these are from the glass factory on the Isle of Wight where me and my family would visit sometimes on holiday. This is probably my favourite piece. It looks like a penguin, but also it's got a rainbow on the other side. How cool is that? Okay, this top shelf is basically my language and linguistics shelf. Like I said, in this bookcase, I mixed together my read and unread books, so I haven't read most of these, but I did really like Mother Tongue by Bill Bryson, as well as this massive beast, which doesn't even fit upright on the shelf. We also have my little Dalek here on the end. I think this is Dalek Faye from The Cult of Scaro, and I'm pretty sure I got him at a summer fair at my primary school one year. This middle shelf is probably my favourite part out of all of my bookcases. This is my mythology and folklore section. This is a big interest of mine and I think it was sparked by a project we had to do in year two on ancient Egypt and I found out all about Egyptian mythology for the first time and became obsessed. And since then it's become a lifelong love of mine. The books are organised vaguely geographically, so on the left we have my one book on Native American beliefs before we get on to the British and Celtic stuff. I've got one specifically Welsh book before we get on to the Norse and Germanic stuff before the Greek and Roman section. Obviously that's a big area of interest for people who are interested in mythology, including myself. Then I've got two books on ancient Egypt and one singular one on Hindu mythology. This part of the shelf is more general mythology books. We've got a book on symbols, got a couple on specific beings and creatures, got three here which are short stories like an anthology of myths and legends and these last ones are some general reference books. Again I haven't read all of these on the shelf but of the ones I have my favourites are probably this one. This is the Kingfisher Book of Mythology. I also love the Encyclopedia of Magical Creatures by John and Caitlin Matthews and then the Tarot Box which contains a set of tarot cards and a book filled with all their meanings and interpretations. I got this about 10 years ago for Christmas because my family knew I was interested in mythology and folklore and I still think they're really cool. And then on this bottom shelf this is kind of a mess, it's where I shovel the books that don't really have a place anywhere else. On the left we have some big fiction books which would be out of place on my fiction shelves or they wouldn't fit properly on some of the shelves and I didn't want to have to rearrange the entire rainbow just to accommodate them. I also have all my family's Calvin and Hobbes books. We love them. I have a toy tiger called Hobbes and my dad would sometimes call me Calvina when I was little and misbehaving and we love them so much that actually when my brother was born he was named Calvin after them. Next in the middle is this massive German dictionary that wouldn't fit onto my language and linguistic shelf. Plus next to it are my books on the North and South Downs. Me and my dad hiked the whole South Downs way last year and we're doing the North Downs this year. Obviously since lockdown we haven't been able to but we're hoping to catch up uh, later in the year, maybe finish it in early 2021 instead. The rest of the books on this shelf don't really have a rhyme or reason to them. I got this bad boy for Christmas and I am obsessed with it. I love the world building and the magic system of Game of Thrones. And then that's it. That is my final shelf. So those are all my books. I don't have any other like little shelves or piles of books hanging around anywhere. I keep my books strictly in my room and strictly on their shelves. Another note for bookshelf organisation in general. I have mine organised in a rainbow because I'm quite a visual person and it works for me. My brain categorises the colour of a book before its genre or its author or anything. So I think if you're not a particularly visual person, rainbow shelves probably won't work for you and it might be better to organise them by genre, do them alphabetically by book, alphabetically by author, you could even have like your favourite five star reads at the top and then work down to your least favourite ones at the bottom. I think the best way to do it is to work out how you picture and categorise your books mentally and then try and replicate that system on your bookshelves. So yeah that's all I have for this video, I hope you found my bookshelves interesting, maybe I gave you more of an insight into my reading tastes if that's what you were hoping to get. Hope you have a great week and I will hopefully see you next for my May wrap up video.